You can also use fiber to modulate the gut microbiota. Um, and this has implications for gut health uh, of the pigs and so on and so forth. And so uh, rather than just see it from the cost perspective, we will see it as a tool in order to improve the nutrient uh, utilization and gut health and efficiency of the pigs. Uh, we better find a way to maximize the use of this fiber. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today I'm joined by Dr. Ayo Deji Adewa-Bigby, an assistant professor at Florida A&M University. So Ayo, I know you from our time at Purdue, but for those of you who are not familiar with you, could you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Um, so thanks for having me, Clay. Um, again, my name is uh, Dr. Ayo Deji Adewa-Bigby, I'm an assistant professor of animal science at Florida a and University. Uh, a bit of my background, I did my um, bachelor's and my master's degree in animal science uh, in Nigeria. And then um, uh, I did my PhD uh, at Purdue University uh, with Dr. Lai Adeola. Um, and after my PhD, I went on to do a postdoc at uh, Auburn University with Dr. B. Dozier in poultry science. Um, and then I got his position in the fall of 2022 uh, as a professor. Um, um, again, you know, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, monogastric nutrition, uh, nutrition swine, um, and I try to use that as a, a way uh, to explore other areas like uh, behavior, uh, welfare, uh, health, and microbiome and, uh, modulation. And so that's, you know, basically uh, my primary uh, research area, and uh, that's what I've been doing ever since I've been here. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Gotcha. So while at Florida A&M, I see you have done some work on optimizing fiber utilization in growing pigs. So to start us off, why is dietary fiber utilization so important for swine nutrition? Well, that's a good question. Uh, fiber, um, you know, like we know is, you know, um, a lot of people see it like a diluent, you know, um, because it can bring down the cost of feed. Uh, but uh, apart from that, you can also use fiber to modulate the gut microbiota. And this has implications for gut health uh, of the pigs and so on and so forth. And so uh, rather than just see it from the cost perspective, we will see it as a tool in order to improve the nutrient uh, utilization and gut health and efficiency of the pigs. Uh, we better find a way to maximize the use of this fiber. And so, you know, functionally, we see fiber in two perspectives. We see it as um, either soluble fiber, which is soluble in water, and uh, insoluble fiber, which is uh, insoluble in water. Uh, a lot of the research that has gone into you know, fiber utilization has you know, used mainly the soluble fiber because it's well uh, fermentable in the hindguts. Um, uh, very few has been done with insoluble fiber because, of course, most of the time we had it to diet just to increase the bulking capacity of the diet. Uh, a lot of these microbes can use them uh, except for um, the commensal butyrate producing microbes uh, from the Famicutis phyla, which you know specifically seek out this insoluble fiber to bind and to degrade and use it as a, uh, a substrate for their energy needs and their metabolism. And so, if we can find a way to improve the fermentability of this insoluble fiber, for instance, uh, by these good bacteria, then we can increase the proliferation, which can translate into better gut health and you know, digestive efficiency. So it's a good area to look at. Uh, I, know, I know some work has been done in that. Uh, but for my own specific um, case, I work with a lot of farmers that raise their pigs, you know, outdoors. Okay, In Florida, we don't have a lot of indoor farming of, uh, of, of swine. So uh, you, they're exposed to heat stress, they're small scale, uh, small scale and medium scale farmers that can afford a lot you know, in terms of their feed costs. So they use a lot of, of these uh, fiber sources in their feed. So how do we increase 
the utilization while also trying to use fiber as a tool now um, to combat heat stress and other stressors that face in the environment. Gotcha. So with the research you've been doing at A&M, what kind of studies have you been running to kind of look at how to enhance the fermentability of those soluble fibers? Oh, that's a good question. So um, this idea, um, you know, for the research I'm about to describe uh, came from a paper that was published by, you know, funny enough, uh, by a professor at the University of Food Science, uh, Dr. Bruce Amaker. Um, and one of the things that he proposed was um, using some feed, some novel feed processing technique like microwave irradiation to open up the fiber, okay, the insoluble fiber. Uh, he used wheat, uh, no, millet uh, fiber as uh, the substrate. So to open it up um, by, you know, increasing access of the gut microbiota to the insoluble fiber matrix, but not breaking down the fiber itself. And he realized that you are able to improve the fermentability of the insoluble fiber without increasing the solubility. Uh, because you don't want to improve and increase the solubility because that can lead to viscous gels and reduce the nutrient digestion and so on and so forth. Um, and so I try to take a step further from that. Um, and uh, a research that I recently, uh, recently con concluded, I did it with pigs that were raised outdoors and I used oat oils as the substrates, uh, as the source of the insoluble fiber. And so the, subs the oat oils were added to diets um, at around 6% of the diet. So you have the low fiber, the low insoluble fiber diet, which is the standard diet, and the high insoluble standard uh, fiber diet. And then, uh, because I've done a lot of work with um, with enzymes, carbohydrates specifically, and I know the, the, the importance of the enzymes, I decided to combine that, um, uh, or the, uh, the, the enzymes to the, to the diet. Um, and also, I decided, instead of doing the microwave, I decided to do the autoclave. So I had the oat oils that were subjected to autoclave uh, treatment over a period of time, uh, different treatment uh, conditions. Uh, uh, and then I decided to have some uh, uh, enzymes also in the diet. So we had like five or six diets with the low fiber, then the high fiber, autoclaved uh, oat oils, and then three or four levels of um, enzyme supplementation. And these were fed to the pigs over a period of time. Um, and interestingly, we realized that um, there was an improvement in the nutrient digestibility. Specifically, you had an uh, increase in the uh, uh, insoluble fiber you know, utilization uh, without an increase or change in soluble fiber utilization uh, breakdown. So. Um, there's still an it is still an ongoing research, but you know essentially what we are seeing right now is that there's an improvement in the use of the uh, insoluble fiber uh, without an increase in the soluble fiber uh, content in the gut. Um, and then we try to take some blood samples also to look at the stressors in the blood, like the cortisol, and then we saw a lot of uh, reduction in the you know the cortisol level uh, for pigs that were fed. The uh, autoclaved oat oils, which is the high insoluble fiber diet, with you know some carbohydrates. So we see some complementarity that is going on in there. Gotcha. So a typical strategy that you oftentimes see is using um, a different level of dietary fat in order to mitigate the effects of heat stress. And with you being down there in Florida, heat stress is obviously a real concern. So can fiber also be used as a strategy for reducing heat stress in pigs? Yeah. Uh, fiber can be a strategy because um, fiber has um, a low thermic effect, just like fat uh, has a low thermic effect also compared to protein and, you know, other simple carbohydrates. Um, and so, um, you know, clearly from the result that I, that I shared, uh, we see that, you know, this increased fermentability uh, reduces the console levels. So this has a way of reducing the heat load of the pigs. And so... Um, you know, you can also use fiber um, compared to, to fats in that regard. Could you then alter the diet's fat and fiber content both in order to maximize the effect of the heat stress mitigation, or would it not add much if you're already utilizing one strategy? Yeah, yeah. They, they're going to compound. You know, a lot of these things that we do is try to find a way to, you know, 
give this compound effect, just like you said. Uh, so um, I don't think they are going to work against each other. I think you can bring those two things together, just like I brought the enzyme, the carbohydrates, uh, in, in addition to the autoclaving of the of the, the old holes, and we see this compound effect, you know, in those diet the hard pots treatments. Uh, so bringing the fiber um, in addition to the unique uniqueness that fat brings into reduction in the heat load, uh, I think we can combine those two effects together uh, in order to bring down the heat load and of course that will translate to better nutrient utilization, better gut health and better performance of the Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Io, for coming on the show and sharing all that research with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Thanks for uh, the invitation and I'm looking forward to more and more discussions in the future. Absolutely. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.